All right, so this is video eight. I just stopped. I posted video seven along with six, I think, and it's now like 1230 at night. I was gonna go to bed. I came over here to straighten out all my units and I noticed these guys. Remember, I asked you guys to <laughs> remind me to do the close combat here. Uh, so I didn't do that close combat. So I'm gonna start this video out. I'm going to do the close combat and then I'm gonna go to bed and then I'll play turn eight hopefully tomorrow. So let me get my close combat feel, uh, battlefield set up here. Uh, so thankfully this guy is disrupted. So I can take a hit and take it and get a hit and get a hit. So I reveal this guy. Uh, okay, he's just a bazooka too. So he doesn't get an extra card for strength because it's only three. Um, whoa, whoa. All right, so technically this is the eighth uh, video in this series. Should be starting game turn eight. However, uh, I took a break. I was posting video seven to, to YouTube, got that all done, ready to go to bed, came over here to straighten out my units, uh, reposition them so that they're all right, all right set up, or straight, uh, and I noticed these guys over here. Remember these guys? Remember this position right here? that I close combated and uh, I said you guys needed to remind me to do that close combat I forgot <sighs> so that said I'm gonna do that now and then I'm gonna go to bed and then I'm gonna start turn 8 hopefully tomorrow uh, but so uh, let me get this set up on my um, uh, my little close combat battlefield here. Um, for now on, forget the whole immediate close combat to postponing close combat. It's I don't understand why it matters um, to do... I don't even think I have it written down. Um, I, I don't know why it, doesn't, it matters to do it immediately or at the end. It, it may have some implications, but... It, it's not worth this is the second time I have forgotten um, <laughs> at the end of the turn and realized it so I'm not doing that anymore when I jump in and do close combat combat I'm going to do it immediately I'm going to bring in whatever units from whatever side I want to and I'm going to uh, resolve it so here's what we have uh, I have I brought in the house I got 12 steps and I got a flamethrower so that is, and that's, I can have a maximum of five cards, right? So 12 steps gives me four cards, flamethrower gives me a fifth. So that is one, two, three, four, five cards for me. And he's got close combat, his strength, I flipped over the death marker before I started the video, uh, when I saw it. So he's got a total strength of three, so he doesn't get an extra card for strength, but he's got close combat. So that's two cards for him. Uh, I should win this. I hope to win this. He's already disrupted, so it's just going to take two hits. It's a blue, but he goes first. And I didn't get a blue. And no event that screws me up, so that's awesome. That's a great way to start this battle out. So nothing from him. I flip. I've got a blue. That depth marker is gone. Now the, the depth marker will go up in the... Uh, elite unit storage and then we'll do that culling at uh, I don't know when it is at the end of the day or whenever it is So I'm gonna keep this depth marker down here so that I remember to put it up there All right, so we hit him because we hit him We hit him does he lose a card? Why can I not remember that? <sighs> See this was supposed to be nice and quick <laughs> Uh when he hits us, we lose a card. So I think when we hit, that's just about answering about how many cards they get. Uh, supposed to be nice and quick. I want to go to bed. All right, let me look up close combat really quick. Um, 
if that's 10. Uh, 8. Yeah, close combat. Alright, uh, reveal, reveal US card. If Japanese participants are not disrupted, place a disruption. Uh, if already disrupted units, remove depth marker. That's what I just did. Uh, eliminate a Japanese unit. Okay, if the card shows the color and position, uh, discard the top card, yeah, from the Japanese pile. Yeah, you can see? So that's, I should have remembered that, but I didn't. All right, so he got hit. He has no more cards. That's sweet, because I've got four. And all I need to do is get one blue and no bad events. There it is. U.S. counterfire on, or U.S. fire on counterattack. Doesn't matter. All right, so he gone. All right, so I got rid of that SAG unit, close combat, disruption marker gone, depth marker will go up in the thing there, and then these guys, unfortunately, what I did in doing this, now I didn't take any step losses, so uh, they're not going to get disrupted for that, but I overstacked <laughs> by doing that. So I take a disruption. Um, which ones do I want to be able to move to the left? I think I want to move my one, I don't know, it, I don't know. All right, so these guys are in here. They're in that position. Now these guys I hadn't moved because I wanted to wait to see if I got that, um, I won that battle. So let's see, do I have, yeah, it's a bluff hex. So I can't move my tank off of there, but I can move these guys off. Whoa. I can move these guys off. Put them there. I'm not going to cock them because of, I'm at the end of the turn. Uh, I just knocked these guys all over the place. All right. So my tank's got to stay there. And then these guys will become undisrupted. All right, so nobody's disrupted here anymore. There we go. All right, so that's it. Come back and uh, start turn eight tomorrow morning when I'm fresh, or tomorrow afternoon, or whenever I get to it. All right, I'm back for turn eight. Uh, <clears throat> now, one thing I didn't do in the morning phase, and I should probably make one of these cards specifically for the morning phase of each turn because there are several things that happen, uh, you know, including the replacement points and all of that. One of these things is culling. All right, this is an idea that the Japanese elite units and any depth markers eliminated after turn seven um, go in the eliminated elite box and then in the AM fight, in the AM phase of um, every every day you basically remove half of the elim uh, the eliminated elite and depth markers and then place the rest in the reserve for sector three if you're still if there's still units in sector three and if you've moved on there's no more units in sector three then you would put them in sector four uh, the thing is if you remember um, we uh, eliminated one elite unit and then at the beginning of this video the um actually no i'm sorry we eliminated depth uh the elite unit is still in the reserves for um for sector two but we eliminated one depth and then in, and then at the beginning of this video at the end well, yeah at the end of turn seven uh we eliminated another depth marker through that close combat so that's why there's two there uh, I looked, and because I was confused, because I really technically I only had one unit or one one depth unit in there at the beginning of the morning. <clears throat> so right here is culling, if you can see that. Um, and it says to randomly select two units and then place one aside, it's permanently removed, the other ones get put in sector three or sector four. Uh, and then it says repeat this process 
un until no longer able to remove two units from the eliminated box. So I say that to say this. Um, those units up in that box at the beginning of turn seven in the morning, there was only one unit. So I could not remove two and it says repeat the process until you cannot remove two. Therefore, that guy remains there because he didn't have a buddy. At turn 10, which is the next morning, there's two guys in there. Hopefully there will be more. Uh, but then I can do that culling process. One of those will be eliminated. The other one will go back into uh, section three, sector three uh, reserves in the cup. And uh, so, yeah, there. So I didn't have to do that at the beginning of turn seven, but I forgot about that. Uh, so there's that. All right. So here we are. We are ready to begin our day. Uh, we start with amphibious landing, which we don't have any excuse me, units to land um, on game turn eight. However, we do have some things happening on game turn nine. Uh, we will get three points of fifth division artillery. And then, <coughs> excuse me, all of our, all of the rest of our tanks come in. All right, so we got the five tanks will come in on red two, which is nice and open. And then we have the uh, Division 4 tanks coming in on Y2, which is nice and open. All right, so we'll get some more tank support. So those are ready and set uh, to go for the next turn. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, all right, so now we go to our HQ phase. All right, um, so we can, we're not moving any of our headquarters yet, so we can move our headquarters up to the second place, uh, the second slot up there in our tracking, which is still... A range of two since they're not moving they haven't increased their range there's no more garrisons to go out so I don't need to worry about the garrison phase right now or the garrison portion of this phase uh, I can only expend replacement points in the morning right I said that uh, the, 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 the replacement points uh, Can, yeah, can only be, um, unit not in reserve can only replace on the first day, first game turn of the day. So I can't do replacement points, but that's okay because we're not all that badly hit. We got a couple of units that have, you know, dropped down to two steps. Uh, hopefully they'll survive uh, and we can not lose anybody. We don't have any catastrophic losses yet. I'm sure that that will not remain uh, for, the, for the entirety of the game. Uh, but so we can't do exp uh, replacement points. We can put units in the reserve um, <clears throat> if we want to. Uh, and they would go in. I would put them, you know, kind of down a little bit to signify that they would be going in in the afternoon. I don't know if I have anybody I can or want to do that with. Uh, we got these groups going up here. As soon as I can take those two unit, those two positions out there, I might take some of these groups and put them over because Suribachi, you can only you can only get so many units attacking this mountain, right? So the rest of them would just be kind of backed up here. So I can move them off, keep them fresh, and then, I don't know, do some kind of wave. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but they're not going to do me any good except holding positions, which hopefully I'll garrison for, so I won't need them. So hopefully I can get more replacement points by putting them up in there, get them all healed up, get ready to go. Go to the north when we need them. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Um, <clears throat> and then as far as the 4th Division, I think I'm going to need them all right now because as soon as we take this position out, we're going to start waving up a little bit and spreading out just a little bit to try to take this section here. Right? we got to we got to take this black position, ASAP, and then we got the quarry to worry about. Which, now that I think about it, I should have added forts, a fort to this quarry position because I'm within three. So I'll do that when, when we come to it. Uh, they're not firing it well. Yeah, they are. This guy's in steady field of fire of yellow. <clears throat> so, I mean, it doesn't matter because there's only one unit there, so only one unit could possibly get hit. 
but I need to, I need to take care of that fort. Uh, so I'll do that. All right. <clears throat> that said, uh, I think that, uh, there's nothing else I need to do in the HQ phase cause I'm not transferring the guys back in cause they need to stay there for a day. Um, I got no one else I need to do. I can't do replacement points. So yeah, that's done. So then we get to jump into the Japanese fire phase and I'll be right back to do that. All right. So we are ready for the event phase. Let's see how bad we get it. Uh, <laughs> look at that again with the naval gunfire. So that's three uh, that we've gotten with this event in the first eight turns. That's well, seven turns really because we didn't have an event on the first turn. That's ridiculous. I mean, that's great, but that's ridiculous. Um, what that means though is. Now we have four naval points. We can only carry over two. So I have to use two points this turn. Otherwise, those events go to waste. So I got to figure out. Uh, um, I mean, there's nothing to <laughs> there's nothing to barrage. Nothing is revealed that I can hit. So I'm going to have to just use them as attack supplements. So what that might help is with these guys over here, because I'm going to attack. I've gotten units there. Uh, so I should be able to, right, I don't have to, um, if I use them for an attack, I don't think there's any restrictions on whether it's revealed or unrevealed. Um, so yeah, so I will smack the crap out of those guys and try to get my three to one so I can start eliminating stuff. Um, and then I'll have to use them for a barrage later. So, okay, well that worked. Um, So we go to Japanese fire phase, my favorite phase of the game. And we've got an A action, an R action, and an M action. Sweet. We've got th <laughs> three different letter actions. All right, so first we take care of our, our black positions. There's no black debar, so the blacks are just strictly going to fire. Um, so these guys are going to get torn up. Uh, and I got to see if there's any circles over here. So let's look at that first. Let's look at Sarabachi first. Uh, all right. So what do we have over here? I've got two positions that are in black field of fire. Do I have any circles? I think this is a triangle because our triangle keeps getting popped or diamond. Yeah. So we're safe there. And then here we have a triangle on top and the step loss underneath. So, okay, good. That black position doesn't hit anybody. Uh, I got to start moving on them though. I'm late. I'm late in getting the Sarabachi. All right, now we come over here to these guys. And these guys are going to hit five units in intense field of fire. Now, okay, that guy's a three step unit. This guy's a four step. I've got a four step heavy weapon there. So that is three units. One, two, three. My engineers at once. So my, uh, see, how do you do this? How? in good heavens sorry trash guys here uh how in good heavens am i supposed to do this if i can only stack two i guess you move in with an overstack i mean that's the only thing i can think of because otherwise there are not enough units for these guys to hit everybody gets hit everybody gets disrupted i'm doing this really poorly <sighs> right i'm right in stating that it's five units in these guys feel the fire that are going to get hit and I have six total because I got disrupted on the last turn with some of these units that couldn't move in and uh, I don't I don't know how to do this I mean there's got to be somebody posting on BGG with some kind of strategy on taking black positions because I thought I had this figured out and I don't um, all right, so one unit, two, 
three, there's a guy underneath there, it's an engineer, four, five, six, seven. So everybody except one headquarter and my already injured engineer are, are going to get hit. <sighs> yeah, yeah. And somehow I got to reveal both of those. What's the, well, <sighs> I'll figure that out when I come to it. All right, so this guy takes a hit. I'll leave this headquarters, or no, I'll leave this headquarters, and I'll make this headquarters get a hit. So at least I can have two. I'm gonna have to come in with him and come in with my one, my one strength or my two strength, and hit that whole big stack there, and hope that. Uh, well, anyway, all right. So my heavy weapons get hit. My headquarters get hit. So they are. Disrupted. I'm on the dark side. I could make a Star Wars joke, but I'm going to refrain. All right, so that guy's not disrupted. These two get hit. That is one, two, three, four. Step loss for this guy. And then this guy takes another hit. So he flips. That's brutal. That is absolutely brutal. All right, so there is my black firing. I get it, I do. I really get it, you know, <laughs> about the scenario, but wow, firing every time hurts really badly. All right. So we've got, and then the, the five units <laughs> uh, firing is insane. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do, I, I can't remember when I'm supposed to do the fortifications, but this guy needs a fort. He is a, he's within three of this guy. Um, he is a, all right, so Black Hilltops and Quarry. Is that Quarry? That's the Quarry. Gets two quarts, class one and class two. Sweet. Okay, so I gotta go to my forts. I gotta find a class one and a class two. Uh, there's a class two. That's a class three, class three. And I'm like barely flipping them so I can, just so I can see the, you know, the class and trying not to, okay, there's a class one. All right, so I don't really see the sides, but I saw that I had a red and I had a yellow, so I'm good. So I mix these dudes up, and I'm gonna plop them on that quarry position. Now, all right. So they get a class one and a class two. Each fort gets a unit and a depth marker and that is for the hilltop and the quarry so I've got one unit there so that means I need another unit and two depth markers from sector three so pardon me while I reach over I'm going to take one unit here I'm going to take two depth markers All right, so with this fort, I've got a unit and a depth marker. And with this fort, I've got a unit and a depth marker. So that's now six strong, and that'll be our next challenge if we ever get past this other black position. All right, this position here does not have a fort, so nothing happens there. I think I'm doing that right. I think, but I'm not sure. All right, so now let's do our lettered action. So we've got an A. So if it's occupied and there's units in the field of fire, uh, they are going to fire, and if there's no artillery symbol, they will assault and counterattack. 
that might work out to our advantage, all right? Because it'll get them off their position, and if it's not a close combat, it's like one, you know, like this guy might assault over here, and it's just one little piddly unit that, you know, might just take one card to take out, and then we've got a free position there. It's not gonna be an elite unit, I don't think. I can't remember what's here, but anyway. Uh, oop, that's not what I'm looking, okay. Uh, so, it'll go for the hex with the fewest steps. Um, so, but it's got to be an occupied position without artillery. If it's with artillery, then it's going to do the uh, artillery action. So, and it's an exception to this column, right? So we've got occupied units in field of fire, occupied no units in field of fire. However, artillery is actually occupied in field of fire. It's kind of the exception to this column. So if it's got no artillery, it's going to assault in counterattack mode. If it uh, doesn't, then it's going to hit us with artillery. If it's unoccupied and within three hexes, we're going to get ambushed. I hope we don't have any of those. I think we do. Yeah. Um, all right. So this guy first. So that is not an artillery position. So he is going to assault. So first he's going to fire. Um, so it's a circle. I already said I don't have a circle here. So instead, he is going to assault which means he's going to come out of his position and go, yeah, and jump on us. He is in counterattack mode, which is good for us for close combat because that means we strike first. We get to draw the first card and we get an extra card, All right? So we go back to our close combat here and we get one per three steps heavy weapons only one step only tanks are doubled plus one if flamethrower plus one if hero plus one if Japanese are in counterattack and uh, so and, and we get this strike first so he is not disrupted though so I need two hits on him all right so let's do that we are moving down to our Close combat battlefield. We're going to reveal, and he is not close combat. He is elite. So if I defeat him, he's going to go back. He's going to retreat. If I defeat him, he's going to pop back to that next red because it's next to it. <sighs> that sucks. All right. So I always put the Japanese on the right just to keep it the same. So we get, we've got four pips. So we get, we get one for strength, we get one for free throw, or free throw. We get one for flamethrower, and we get one because Japanese are in counterattack. They are a three strength, they are not a close combat, so they get one little card. All I need is a red, I need two reds really, because I need to disrupt them, and then I need to defeat him. And if I defeat him, he just moves backwards, which, ugh. all right. Uh, I did not get a red, so nothing happened. I got a withdrawal hit, but that doesn't mean anything. He didn't get a red. Uh, U.S. fire on counterattack. That could help us. U.S. fire on counterattack. Let's see what that says. All right, U.S. fire on counterattack. This event is drawn from the Japanese pile. It was during a Japanese counterattack. It was. Treat this card as no hit. It wasn't anyway, regardless of the target symbol. If drawn from the U.S. pile during a Japanese counterattack, treat this card as a hit regardless of the symbol on the color of the card. If a Japanese counterattack, treat it as no event. All right, so that would have only done us good if we drew it, but we didn't. So either way, it just becomes a no event and a no hit. All right, so I need two reds coming out of here because I need to disrupt them and I need to kill them. I got no red, but I got CC reinforce, which, does that help me? If, I think so. Uh, yeah, so, it, okay, Japanese, a uh, card, uh, to the Japanese pile. Oh, let's just add a card to the Japanese pile. And a participating Japanese unit has no depth marker, draw and replace depth marker. But, if drawing during a counterattack, add depth by adding a depth marker from the reinforcement pool. If this event occurs during a U.S. card play and the card has a hit, the hit and the reinforce event offset each other, uh, and the event, no event, no hit. Ah, so, crap. 
so they get a depth marker. Doesn't say they get a card. Draw and place a depth marker revealed. If drawing during a counterattack, add depth by adding a depth marker from the reinforcement pool. Wouldn't you do that either way? Uh, whatever. So now we get the friggin' depth marker. So not a, this was supposed to work in my favor. It really was. Because I had the cards. He was in counterattack. Alright, so we get a depth marker. I think it said reveal. Uh, and it's a close combat, which I'm not gonna put into play here, but the next time I hit him, gosh, that and a seven. Oh, ooh. So <laughs> those guys now become next to impossible to kill. Alright, so I get my last card. And no red. There was literally no red in this entire stack of cards. What are the odds of that? Alright, Naval Artillery Blast. Oops. That could affect me and him. Alright. Uh, draw a card from the draw deck. Um, okay. It shows the color. So if the card does not show the color of the CC hex, no event. Uh, if the card shows both the color of the CC hex and the target symbol for any US unit in the close combat, remove one step from that unit. What? Well, it's a circle. I don't have that. If more than one unit in the close combat has the same target symbol, remove. Okay. If no units in the close combat have the target symbol shown on the card, eliminate the depth marker from the Japanese force in the close combat. If no depth marker, eliminate the Japanese unit. Okay, so that worked. Thank goodness we didn't get a diamond. So this nasty four strength close combat uh, depth unit just got eliminated. Alright. So all that for not a whole lot. I'll put this over here in the eliminated elite unit box. And then this guy uh, returns disrupted. I think he returns disrupted. I'm going to say he does. Um, I did not take a hit in that whole deal. So this guy is not disrupted. All that for that one red guy's turn. Let's see if we have any more. Uh, we do. We're going to have two more assaults. Actually, I don't know. Uh, so this guy up here is red. He's got units within range and so uh, he is going to assault occupy a position without artillery there's no artillery in sector 2 uh, US units oh it's US units with an intense field of fire oops is that right? Uh, I gotta look at the lettered unit, the lettered action. Uh, uh, let's see, A, 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 A. I don't know why they didn't put this in alphabetical order, but okay. Uh, occupied position without artillery, Japanese unit, US unit in its intense field of fire, move the Japanese unit and its depth marker from the position into a hex occupied by one or more of those US units. Then conduct close combat. Yeah, so it's intense field of fire. So I made a mistake over there. I'm gonna leave that the way it is. I've already done it, I've already revealed them, I've already, you know, there's there's no way really around that. But this guy, oh, he is an intense field of fire. All right, so this guy is gonna hop over on top of him. He is going to initiate close combat. So here we go again. All right, I have six plus a flamethrower, so I'm gonna get three plus one for Japanese being in counterattack. He's a measly little three unit with no, I'm sorry, uh, with no uh, uh, CC. So he gets one card, I get four, and I draw first. And this guy, if he gets a limit, if, he, if I beat him, he's gone, which is nice because I don't have to worry about that position anymore. There it is, red, boom, that's it. Uh, close combat done. He's gone. I don't get disrupted, which is nice because I can still take an action to assault that blue position. Alright, 
So that was quick and that was easy. And he is not elite, so he does not come back to hunt me. So sometimes this assault action is good. When we did it over here, not so good. It turned out not to really hurt us too bad, but thanks to that uh, naval fire. But that guy's gone. So now we got one more right over here, but he is not in field of fire. But he is within three, and that does have artillery. Uh, so, uh, all right, U.S. unit must be in field of fire though. So it's, there is no, uh, there is nobody in field of fire. So he doesn't do anything. Okay, and then unoccupied uh, within three hexes, they will ambush. Disrupt one U.S. unit within three hexes. Use the target symbol. All right, target symbol is uh, circle, and we have that guy up there. All right, one, two, three. So it's this stack here is within three, and this stack here is within three. Well, that's not a stack, but everybody's a diamond. So we're free and clear from the assault. We would have just gotten disrupted, but still, you know, we didn't want that anyway because we want our strength full. This guy's four way, so he doesn't count. He is a circle, but all right. So that's the A action. My goodness, uh, we <laughs> we're twenty some odd minutes into this. We've only done one of the actions. Okay, uh, so the R action. The R action is going to be resupply and fire. or redeploy or reinforce. So R sucks. So we come over here, we got an R. He's already got a depth marker, so he can't resupply. Uh, so he is just going to fire. And again, it's a circle because we don't have anybody in intense field of fire. We have no circles, so we're good to go. Uh, that purple, thankfully, is not gonna do anything. We move around and I've got that purple position. This guy here. All right, I've got one stack here. Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, that is in his steady field of fire. Um, so he will resupply and he will fire. Um, I don't have any circles there. So we won't hit anybody, but he's gonna resupply. He's in sector three, so he gets a sector three depth. All right, so they're starting to get stronger. All right, and that is all the purples that are within three hexes of me. Yeah. All right, so we move on to M. M is, uh, going to be machine gun, mortar, and muster. Machine gun's not good because it extends their field of fire. So there's no blues over here that are occupied. I've got that blue. We got this guy up here. Uh, he is going to machine gun me, um, which, I mean, isn't really going to affect me because he would have hit me anyway. He's only one unit. So he's gonna hit this guy and then he's done. So it's just like a regular fire action for him. Uh, yeah, so we got a step loss for that guy. He's unfortunately disrupted and can't participate in our attack. But we've got enough. And if I need to use navel, I'll blow him off the face of the earth. Uh, all right, so that happened at that blue position. Uh, does not look like I have any more that are within range. So I got this guy over here who's blue and uh, he's got uh, no units in field of fire. Uh, US units would target, um, he would do mortar fire within three hexes for US units with the target symbol. The only guy within three hexes is this guy and he doesn't have the target symbol. So his mortar fails. Oh wait, I got this guy too. I don't think he's a circle. He is a circle, but he already took a hit. He already took a hit this turn. So he can't get hit again. Oh, goodness sakes. Ah. 
What the heck? <laughs> These stacks are so dang tall. Uh, all right, I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that. So he already took a hit, he can't take another hit. So the mortifier doesn't do anything. I think the only time something can take extra hits on a turn is if there is a, uh, an armored unit, a Japanese armor unit, and something happens and it can, it can hit, it's got a, on the M, it's got a multiple fire action. Um, and it could hit a unit more than once. Uh, so, okay, so that is the only other M I need to worry about. So that's it. That's it. All right. We have done our Japanese fire phase. Uh, we now do the second event phase. Uh, <laughs> that is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Um, another naval gunfire. We now have five naval points. I'm just going to have to use them in attacks left and right. Every attack that I make is going to be with naval gunfire. All right, uh, so now we come to our U.S. action phase. Now it's time to boogie. Okay, so let's try this first, okay? I want to reveal these. So I'm going to use this unit plus naval gunfire on here, and I'm going to use this unit plus naval gunfire on here. I'm not going to have the points. Uh, so it's the only, the only good thing that will come out of this is that I'll reveal the units, and then I can use barrage to, to kick the pants out of it and hopefully reduce the fortifications and stuff and start doing that. But that's the thing. It's the first thing I have to do is reveal. All right, so this guy's going in. He's got naval uh, coming in after him, so I got nine points of attack. Um, actually, let's do 11 points uh, or 12 points. I'll have this HQ attack as well. Um, no, 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 no. I'll have this HQ supplement here, and this guy, and these guys, and I will have all these two range guys with not going over um, the heck, uh, the bluff hex side, uh, so I'll get some more strength there. So yeah, I'll have this guy come over, yeah, I'll have this guy come over here, and I'll have all my eight units su uh, support the engineer over here and hit that. All right, so we're going to do that. I got, uh, I got 12 points coming into this guy. So first I reveal and he needs flanking and I reveal the fort because it's possible that attacking from this way there's going to be a block there and I won't be able to hit and everyone will be disrupted. Look at that. Look. Ah, oh, how gorgeous is that? It's open on this side because you arrange it so that the arrow is pointing towards you. So it is open on this side. So we're in business. Okay, so that fort is on low ground, so it's this is just going to get a double, uh, double strength from that fort. So it's eight strength. I don't have the units, but I have twelve. So I start out at three to two. That's not bad. Uh, that could have been a lot worse. All right, so we have our attack. We start out at three to two because I got twelve to eight. Uh, Japanese unit is technically alone. Right? He's just on a fort. That was not a hilltop. I did not need to add a depth marker. So that's about the Oh, but I don't have bleh, I don't have the weapons because he needs flanking. Stupid. Stupid guy. Alright, so it comes down to here. So he gains a depth marker. And then I come over here. And then it's reveal the depth marker. And then Japanese unit and reveal depth marker are disrupted. So he gains a depth marker, a sector three depth. I reveal that depth marker, which is close combat. That's not good. All right. And I recalculate. Uh oh. So. He gains a depth marker and I come over here and I recalculate. Or do I just come here? Because it. Okay. So I get the D plus, gains a depth marker, reveal depth marker, yeah, and recalculate the attack. Alright, so 
I recalculate the attack and it's a 10. So I no longer have 3 to 1, I have 1 to 1. But now I don't have the units. So I have to go 1 to 2. Come over here, it's ADR. All US units in the hex with the most steps are disrupted. Do not disrupt, count disrupted steps. Um, and then reveal depth marker, recalculate. And then it's no effect. All right, so instead of him being disrupted, it's me being disrupted. Uh, and it says the stack with the most um, and don't count disrupted. So it's the same strength. So if all is fair and love and war, I'm going to disrupt these guys and keep that guy undisrupted. All right, so the best thing that happened there is I revealed. I couldn't disrupt them. Wasn't there anything I could do about that. It is what it is. Um, so now we hit this guy. And I gotta bring the house. So I'm gonna have two, 10, Eighteen, Are these guys disrupted. Yeah, that guy took a hit. These guys should be disrupted. I must have just forgot to put a marker on there. Because the only guys that weren't is this guy and this guy. Everyone else got hit. So maybe I actually no, this guy was disrupted. He took a hit. So yeah, I just I forgot to put it disruption marker on these guys. All right, so it's 2, 10, 18, plus a navel, which let me mark those off. I used one, I'm gonna use another one, I'm down to three, I still have to use another one. All right, so I got 24 strength coming into here right now. Boom, boom, boom. So we take this, we reveal the fort, and maybe I'll get the same luck as I did before. No, I did not. All right, so I gotta attack this guy from the back. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. So I'm going to have to barrage the crap out of him next turn just so I can attack him. So that means that every single one, every, ah, every single one of these guys now, I believe, gets disrupted. I reveal, okay, if I, if I'm coming in, I reveal the unit. So fortifications, oh wow, this is frustrating. I mean, it's interesting, but it's frustrating. All right, so fortifications. Um, uh, fort revealed when U.S. attacks. If attacking from an obstructed side, U.S. units are disrupted. Fort gains a unit and a depth marker if it doesn't have them. It does, so I don't have to do anything with it. Um, flank attack may occur only through pass block sides. Okay. So this is revealed, and all that strength I just threw at it is for naught because I'm coming at it from that side. Now technically, is the navel, no, the navel's not technically coming from that side. All right, so let's do that. Navel, I'm gonna say that, all right? So uh, everything here gets disrupted. All three of those thinking stacks get disrupted. What color am I using for disruption? I think I'm supposed to be using this side now. I don't know. I can't, you know, it's 50 50 and I can't keep it straight. Almost knocked that stack over again. All right, so all these guys get disrupted. Every guy that came in on that attack hit the wall of a fort and went Meh, and can't do anything. Oh my soul, my heart hurts after that. Okay, so I now have a, this is doubled, so I have a four strength and I've got six artillery coming in. So that's three to two. Artillery is not machine gun though. So I don't have it, so I'm one to one. So it's here, JR, uh, reveal the depth marker and recalculate the attack. Hey, it needs naval. <laughs> That's a good thing. 
uh, and a radio. Well, I don't have a radio, but I do have an able. So that is now five, it's doubled to 10. So it's now six to 10, so I'm one to two, no effect. All right, so basically same thing there. I revealed it, I revealed it. The problem is they are going to hit me again next turn before I can even barrage them. So I, I, my goal was to try to disrupt them, but that, that fortification hex side just, just annihilated me. So these guys are going to pretty much die a horrible death unless I can get them out of there. I can't, I, and I can't even, I can't add replacement points. I can't undisrupt them because they're next to and in a field of fire. So they're just going to be disrupted and getting hit. There's no way to, to get them out of there. How do you do that? And now the guys behind them are disrupted. So I can't even, I don't even know. I don't even know. I mean, I can't, I can't backtrack them. They're just going to get hit. There's got to be some loophole. There's got to be some way out of that. But look at that. Everything around these guys is disrupted. There's nothing I can do about that. That's frustrating. All right. Uh, so that wasn't as successful as I hoped it would be. Let's go over to this blue unit here. And uh, let's attack them from, well, I got a three. The other guys are disrupted. This guy's coming across. This guy's behind. Yeah, so I'm gonna do three, four, five, six, seven. Um, yeah, let's do, let's stick with the seven. And then maybe this guy can move in. All right, yeah, okay, good. So all I needed was mortar. Uh, it's a one strength SAG unit, and so he gets killed. <clears throat> so these guys are used. Uh, when did he get hit? He got hit on the artillery phase of last turn, so he's no longer disrupted. He's no longer disrupted, he's no longer disrupted. This guy I just used. So this guy, I attempt to hop up in there, but then my my elite unit buddy who's sitting over there in the reserve pool has the potential of popping in. I don't have any command posts anywhere near there. So I don't have any hope of throwing a garrison on there anytime soon. So I'm gonna have to do it and hope that I don't get a blue. I got a blue, I got a blue. So that means my friend over here comes back and I believe he needs flanking. I can close combat him, but I would just get one card. If I close combat him, I could disrupt him, but I could also take a hit. And it's a, it's a, <sighs> yeah, I can't. Oh, this game is frustrating. I might not make it to 64 points because I might just go, ah, and flip the board. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's fun. It's interesting. I haven't lost interest yet, but I just, you know, sometimes things hit you and you don't know what in the world you're going to do about it. All right. These guys are coming after him. So I'm going to send my eight unit up in there. There are no more units in the reserve, so I can immediately backfill with... My engineer underneath. Um, yeah, and he's commanded by this guy, so let's do that. One machine gun, got it, no problem. He's dead. Engineer's jumping in. Good. Okay, now this guy. Uh, let's see. We've got our C-127s. Our 127 is there. He can command with it uh, in three, so that's good. Got an engineer, and I've got a 328. Where's his guy? Oh, he's over here. So he can command within three as well, because he's in command of his command post too. So I got all those guys. I'm going to attack with these units here, and then I'm going to hope to split these guys coming into both of the 
both of the brown. Uh, so that is a 12 attack on a two that needs demolition. I have it. So he's gone. And then these two are going to split the difference here and jump into those positions. So that if I can ever eliminate that guy that I just brought out, I don't have to worry about them not, occup uh, not occupying those spots. Uh, it's going to be... Well, next turn I'll be able to garrison this one, and it's going to be a couple of turns before I can garrison that one. So he's just going to have to hang there, or I'll have an engineer come up here and fill that. All right, so that's that. I got this side of the board. I got the middle uh, assaulted. Um, my engineer there, I haven't done anything with. Um, I don't know that I'll need him. But we'll bring him up just in case. So I'm going to go one two, no muff because I've got units next to him, and three, and he's going to come here. Uh, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll stack this guy with this so that I can take uh, artillery fire if I need to. It's two units, so that's a stack that could get disrupted if I have artillery fire. Well, I will have artillery fire. All right, so that's what I'll do there. Now, coming over to Sirabachi. I gotta figure stuff out. Give me a second though. The wife is texted. I need to figure out what she wants. Right. So, Sirabachi. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. Uh, I mean, I just have to start advancing. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I can't attack these guys if I don't get units in there. I can't barrage them until I get them uh, revealed. This guy's revealed because of my mistake, but he's already disrupted, so I don't need to barrage him. Um, yeah, so let's move in. Now, I don't want to take this dude. That guy's disrupted anyway. Um, but I need... The, the thing is going to be, every unit is going to get hit and disrupted. There's got to be some kind of loophole. Because if I've got six, and then potentially seven, eight, nine, ten, I can't get that many units next to them without taking fire. So I don't know what to do. Other than move everything close in an overstack. Well, no, I can't even overstack in because I will move them in. I can move 10 units in. There's a potential that all 10 units will get hit and then re hit and then re. <laughs> oh boy. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, I'm running out of time for this turn, so I need to, I need to figure this out. I need to just do it. Um, I don't have enough near and ready to go in so all right, these guys will move here those guys are disrupted and they'll lose their disruption marker so if that I can just get one two three four but this is an intense too so I can get three in and get three positions taken or uh, occupied next turn. Then all three of them are going to take intense fire from black, which is six uh, stack six high. Um, there's no way with these rules that I can I can take that. Well, I know there's a way, but I, I'm I'm looking at it as a futile effort. Uh, all right, so right, I just moved those guys here. Here's the thing. This is, this is bulldozed now. So I could come in and rush attack this position here, right? On the next turn with these guys, I would come, I would take muff fire coming in twice Ew. so maybe they should attack these guys first that's going over a hex 
or going over bluff hex. So it's mm, I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. I'm not as good at strategizing this as I thought I was. So here, this is intense from purple and from black. So if I move these guys in, they're just going to get destroyed unless I have more units to take some of that fire. So I'm not... Uh, I mean, how, how on God's green earth do you do this? If I can't barrage before they're revealed, the only way to reveal them is to attack them. And the only way to actually be able to attack them is to have more units than units that can get hit. Not to mention the fact that as soon as I move them in, they're, they're eligible for artillery fire. I can't stack that many. I can't move that many on one turn. I can't stack them. So there's like no real good way to do this. I gotta, I gotta try to come around on the high ground maybe. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, those guys already moved. Well, they moved off of this, so okay, they could technically move again. But they would take muff. So they moved here, they could move here, take muff fire, and then attack these guys over the over the bluff side. So that would be, and I could bring another naval fire in because I have it. Yeah, that's what I got to do. That's what I got to do. All right, so they go one, two, and then the third movement will be over, well, we'll be attacking. Um, Wait, no, I can't do that. I can't move and attack on the same turn. So they would have to move here and sit and then attack. Uh, sit and get hit and get disrupted and then attack. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna pause because I'm running out of tape and I need to finish the turn. I need, to, I need to contemplate how exactly I'm gonna do this. All right, so I've been thinking about it. The only thing I can think of right now to help with the matter is these guys moved once up into here. I can move them a second time because this is all uh, beach and so it's been bulldozed. And then a third time into here and close combat these suckers. And then I can take these guys and go one, two, three and get them ready to do the same maneuver to come into uh, yellow next turn. If these guys get hit, disrupted, whatever, they come back here, they're gonna get hit next turn. And then these guys would have to leapfrog over them. They'd already be disrupted, so I don't think that's gonna be an issue. But uh, yeah, that's all I can think to do. So let's move down here to my close combat battlefield. Back up a little bit. Okay, uh, and let's see what we have. All right. Uh, okay, so we got a four strength, and okay, well, we got no close combat. That's a small victory. We got six strength, two units, so that's going to be three cards for them. I've got six strength and a flamethrower, so that's three cards for me. All right, so one, two, three cards for me. One, two, three cards for them. They go first. The best I can hope for... I, uh, if I can at least get these guys disrupted, I might take some losses here. But if I can at least get these guys disrupted, so it's one less firing dot on me next turn, that'll be a small victory. Um, yeah. But they're probably going to hit me. Let's, and then I'll lose a card. And, well, let's just let it play out. All right. So that's, that's a good start. That's a good start. No purples there. Now it's me. All right, I get a purple. Sweet. So that disrupts him. So he will get a disruption marker. And he will go. Uh, shoot, does he lose a card? I think he loses a card when I hit him. Hang on. I know I lose a card when he hits me. So I think he loses a card when I hit him. Hold on. 
Okay, so you th I've done close combat enough in these games, you'd think I'd remember that, but sometimes you forget things. All right, so he gets hit, he loses a card. That's good for us. All right, and then he goes again, and all right, well, if he was a conscript, he would have surrendered, uh, but he's an elite unit, so he doesn't. But I got no purple, so that's good. All right, so now me, I got two more cards, he's got none left. So if I get two purples here, gosh, that would be awesome. All right, there's a purple. All right, so the depth is eliminated. Uh, he would lose a card, but he doesn't have any more. And then, oh, look at that. And it's even CC Heroism, so I would get an additional card. Uh, I don't need it, though. So, uh, uh, so that's it. Yeah, he's eliminated. Sweet good golly. I can't believe that happened. Okay, so this guy, whoops. This guy here gets to occupy this position. And I destroyed an artillery. I destroyed an artillery. Okay, things, things are looking up. Destroyed artillery. And the artillery points in sector one are all worth three. So my Japanese sector one marker goes down to nine. Okay, okay, okay. Now uh, that poor sap that just won that close combat, he's gonna get, uh, he's gonna hit with artillery and then he's gonna get hit with black gunfire next turn. So I might wanna move some of these poor saps in just to, well, they're gonna take, eh, they're gonna take fire regardless. So I think unfortunately they're sacrificial lambs to begin with. These guys will come in here and take them and if anybody survives and if I can get anybody undisrupted, that's why I gotta I gotta bum rush it because I gotta have units in there for for this stack to hit, and then I also have to have units to. I gotta have at least one unit left so that I can hit this stack here. Um, so, so anybody that can move into this spot is that even gonna do me any good? Because see right here. Red is disrupted, purple is uh, taken. So only black is uh, projecting into this spot here. I got one, two. I need six units, I, I need seven units in black field of fire. And they're gonna hit the closest units. They're gonna hit the closest units first. So I need seven units here and here so that I have one unit to try to try to reveal. One unit left, I need one unit left after, after the Japanese attack to be able to reveal them. So I'll, that's the question is how do I get seven units in there? I can't this turn. Um, these guys here could have hopped over this while they were still disrupted and got get in here and then I can take this this guy here and then I can one at a time leapfrog with whatever the heck I have in here all I have is one unit and two tanks so the tanks can't go so yeah I I, I have to try to get seven in there so I get this guy to go I get this guy to go that's four. These two will go one, two, three, and that'll be six. That'll overstack that, cause a disruption. I need one more unit to jump into there, and it's going to be these guys. One, two. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Gosh. All right, come on, work with me here, stupid fat fingers. Okay, so these guys are gonna go one, two, and no, okay, yeah, and that's the other thing, is no muff fire, because these guys are here. And so he's only got a one, one position, muff range 
So, all right, so these guys come in and uh, they jump on top. I'm going to, I think, disrupt my HQ and the wounded guy. And again, I, you know, I, I may be thinking this out wrong, but I've got to have more units than can get hit. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six in this stack, two in that stack. That's eight. That means, and this guy can't get hit by yellow. So it's just black. So I got eight in black. This one is technically in yellow's uh, field of fire. I don't know why this guy isn't, but he's not. He should be. Shoot. So I missed a dot. I missed the dot. This, this one here should have an, a yellow intense field of fire. So that's seven units that are definitely going to get hit. I have eight. That's going to have to do, because I don't think I can get anybody else there. I'm going to move my... I'm going to move all of these guys over into this. Uh, I got my tanks. Um, let's see what's under here. I got tanks under there, so I can take these guys. I'm going to move this guy out, though. Because I need to pull him off. So he's going to just come down the beach over here. Um, this guy's going to hop up on that command post. And in fact, I think he's going to go ahead and hop over to here. So he's ready as well. And I can get his plus two. There'll be two more to fire into there. Uh, these tanks aren't moving because they're... Um, yeah, I don't want to move here until I can get that revealed and barraged. Well, actually, I've got enough unit. Well, he'd be in brown field of fire, so they would get hit. So I really, I want to, I want to save them for. Well, what do I got here? I got one tank. Okay, so I can move. I got two tanks there already. So. Um, until turn 10, I can't move the tanks really inward more than one turn apiece. Alright. Well, these guys up here, these guys will lose their disruption. What do I have here? Alright, two units, that's good. Um, and I know I'm messing up some, some movement stuff. I don't care. Um, it's, it's too much. <laughs> it's too much to think about. So those guys can't really do anything right now. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pretty much it. I can, let's see, those are, I can't, I can, I could actually use those in my initial assault on this. Yeah, okay. So, I'm in. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Uh, let's see. So, that's the U.S. phase. Now we go to the Japanese artillery. Uh, so, we're checking for... I'll move that in a minute. Uh, we're checking for Sector 1 now, because i got people in Sector 1. Ah, uh, shoot. See, I've got eight units in there. One of them's going to get hit. Seven of them are going to get hit. So they're all going to be... Oh, wait. Artillery isn't going to disrupt anybody, though. So that one unit that gets hit, or maybe two, that get hit from artillery uh, will... Well, I can disrupt the units to avoid the hits, and then they'll take the hits. I, I'm not going to use them anyway next turn. I'm going to use one out of the eight units. So I can still disrupt one stack. I can disrupt, I can disrupt these guys if it's divisible by one. And here's the thing, they're now down to nine points. Uh, what happens now? I'm in here, so yeah, three of them, I, I think that, I mean that, that thing that they don't divide their points going into sector two, I don't know if that applies once you have people in that sector. So I'm gonna say no. 
Uh, and so I'm going to say that these guys now have two thirds of nine, which is six, to to hit these dudes. So I get a nine. So that's six divided by nine is two thirds, which rounded up is one. So one unit will get hit, and instead of getting hit, taking a hit, I'm going to disrupt these guys. So that's one less hit I'm going to take. All right. Now artillery for sector two, I got three plus. Uh, uh, what comes from sector three? I got 28 still in sector three. So I got three plus nine is 12. I got a six, so that's two units getting hit. So I can disrupt two of them. So I will disrupt my, my two stacks in the middle again. On the airfield, closest to the airfield is the rule. Um, so that's going to be the 23s. These guys and these guys. My two, my three 23s are going to be by designated disruptors for artillery. So, um, okay, so that's that. And then I'm in sector three as well. I use two thirds of those points, or I use one third of those points for. Uh, the other side, and so they have 19 left. Uh, oh, and then I have sector four, which is 10. Shoot, so I got 19. So technically, yeah, sector four is firing in here too. I missed that last time. So that's uh, what 20, uh, 20 uh, 19 plus 5 is 24. Yikes. And I got an 8. So that's perfectly divisible by 3. Um, unfortunately, I've got a bunch of disrupted uh, stacks in there already. I can't re-disrupt them. They've got to be undisrupted stacks. Because they all took hits. And then now they're going to take hits again. Although, can they take hits from artillery if they've already taken hits in this turn? Ah, let me look. Alright, so I'm back. Uh, this Game Turn 8 video is going to be extremely long. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, there's a few things though, and uh, remember I reserve the right to back up if I got something wrong and if it helps me. Um, before I get to that though, uh, I have this elite unit that I defeated in close combat over by Surabachi. Uh, he had nowhere to retreat to uh, because of stacking limits and such. So he ends up going in the eliminated units box for potential culling. So I'm going to do that just so I can get that out of the way. All right, now over here, as I was trying to figure out artillery and what I do, you know, with disruptions and all of that, uh, so I was looking back through the rules to see if, you know, things can get hit by Japanese fire and artillery. I didn't find anything that would stop that from happening. But one of the things I, I saw that I forgot about um, is that when uh, when a unit takes a hit from Japanese fire, I can choose to disrupt two units in the target hex instead of taking a step loss, as long as no unit in that hex has the same fire field symbol as the drawn fire card. All right, I can choose to disrupt two units instead of taking a step loss. So I'm assuming that's all units in that hex and all step losses that that hex would have taken. So if you remember, our fire symbol, our fire card, our symbol was a, was a, a circle. All right, I've looked at these, okay, and this grouping here has no circle. So my thought is, if they took a disruption, they don't take a hit. And then over here, these guys took hits. There is a circle there, so I couldn't have prevented that. Um, yeah, so those guys would have taken hit. This guy was the one guy that was left unhit, and he's the guy that came in with the main attack on this stack. So this one still remains. These guys still, unfortunately, uh, got hit. Oh, this heavy weapons. This heavy weapons gotten hit twice. Dang. 
that's going to be a lot of replacement points for him. I might just have to let him go. Uh, and then this stack here oops, uh, also does not have a circle. So I can eliminate that and flip this guy back, and I could have just disrupted these guys. So that's four hits I didn't take. Now, I guess that would mean I'd have to move out to the um, steady field of fire to generate more. So, uh, and, and again, I, I, I'm you know I looked at the video a little bit. I didn't actually look at how the hits were taken exactly but I remember that and let's see this guy took a hit what is this what oh this guy's supposed to be here um, so there were six units here there were five that fired because this this depth wasn't there until I attacked him. So that's two four hits that didn't get that didn't happen. This guy was still unhit, so that stack wasn't fully disrupted. So he was still able to come in here. These guys still got disrupted from that uh, fortification hex. So basically, I just I, I've eliminated some hits based on that uh, based on that disruption rule. I may have gotten some of that wrong. Uh, at this point, I don't care. Uh, I, I need a little bit of help uh, to to be getting through that. Uh, and if I can take disruptions as opposed to hits, they're still disruptive, but at least they're not gonna they're they're not closer to dying. Uh, and I'll accept that. So anyway, uh, now back to the artillery. And the thing about that is, um, this is where they're going to take hits because. There's three hits that are going to happen in there because it was uh, 19 plus 5 from sector 4, which is 24 divided by 8 is 3. Uh, and so the um, diamond units will take a hit. Now I can do that disruption thing again, but I don't have any stacks that are undisrupted. So the diamonds are going to have to take hits. But at, at the very least, that, that uh, stopped me from taking two hits a piece, right? So I gotta find three diamond units. I got one here, he's already in bad shape, so I hope that I can find more diamond units than that. There's one. Shoot, that might be the only other one, in which case he is down to one. Yeah, that's it. That's it, dang it. All right, so this guy takes a step loss, and then my other diamond down there also takes a step loss, and he is down to one health. I need to try to move him out before he gets killed, but I don't know how I'm gonna do that, because the only thing he can do next turn is be undisrupted. And, uh, oops, <laughs> ah! chain reaction and knocking stuff over um, and he's in that black field of fire and so if I get unlucky and draw another diamond nothing I can do he'll be gone uh, so that would be my first catastrophic loss I mean it's early but it's it is what it is I can't take him out into reserve because he's in field of fire. I can't move him because he's disrupted. So he's just kind of stuck there getting hit until he can be undisrupted and move. So I got to get lucky and not not draw a diamond two turns in a row so that I can undisrupt him and then I can move him. Yeah. All right. Well, that's how all that played out. Uh, that ends the turn. There's nothing I need to be worried about as far as raids. Um, and so that is all. I'm signing off until turn nine.